Hi guys, today we're going to talk about physical and chemical changes. A physical change is the change in the size, the shape, or the state of a substance. It's the same thing before and after. For example, if I break a pencil, it's still a pencil. If I crumple up a sheet of paper, it is still a piece of paper. Okay, so it's the same thing before and after. So that's why I wrote same thing, different package. It's still paper. Whether I cut it, I crumple it, I soak it in water, it's still paper. Those would all be examples of physical changes. Okay, some can be reversed, some cannot. Um, cutting our hair is a physical change. Can't be reversed as much as we sometimes wish it could be. Um, melting ice can be reversed though, because then you can just freeze it again. So breaking a stick, physical change. Okay, so crumpling, cutting, soaking are all examples of physical changes. So more difficult examples for kids to remember is changing state is still a physical change. As long as you're moving solid liquid gas, gas liquid solid, any of those words, it's a physical change. It's still the same substance if you have solid gold or if you've melt the gold and it's now liquid. It's still gold. Dissolving is also another one that sometimes stumps kids. So if you've ever made Kool-Aid, you know, you stir it in there, it's still just sugar and water and some food coloring, okay? Um, we didn't change what the substances were. We just mix them together. We didn't change the bonding that would res result. So what's happening to the atoms? So you can see here how initially the red atoms are close together and over time those red atoms get more spread apart. It's kind of, it's, it's like diffusion. If someone were to fart in a room, it just spreads out to fill the room. It's not a chemical change, the spreading out. Okay, so it's really key to remember that in a physical change, the, how the atoms are attached to each other are not, is not changing. Okay, here's another example. In liquid water, all those water molecules are really close together. You heat it up and it becomes water vapor or steam. And you see the oxygen is still attached to two hydrogens. Just each water molecule is further apart than the other water molecules. Here we have a solid, atoms in a liquid, atoms in a gas. But they're, the, what they are connected to by bonds is not altered. So a chemical change is a change in which something new with completely new properties is produced. So for example, in, when I burn a piece of paper, it is no longer paper. The ash that is produced has very different properties than the paper. The gas that is produced is very different than the paper. So something new with new properties has actually been formed. And you can, uh, if you were able to look at the atoms in the paper, the way the atoms were bonded together will have changed during a chemical change. Another word for a chemical change is a chemical reaction. So some examples of chemical changes are things like rusting, burning, reacting, like will it react with vinegar? Will it react with oxygen? Will it react with water? Digesting, like human growing. In general, if it has to do with something that's living, it's probably a chemical change because living things are really complex organisms and are doing many, 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 many chemical reactions every minute of every day. So if it's something with a, a plant, like a plant doing photosynthesis, that's a lot of chemical changes that are occurring. To recognize a chemical change, I want you to first imagine a mad scientist mixing things together in a laboratory. And as you imagine that, most kids, they imagine test tubes, they imagine things changing color. Sometimes there's bubbling or fizzing or maybe even exploding. 
And you can use that mental image to remember some of the signs of a chemical change, of that a chemical change is occurring. So a change in color can be a sign of a chemical change, as long as you can't explain it by like, oh, I put red food coloring in water. No, that's that's a physical change. But if the red coloring comes out of no other explanation, then there's a chemical change occurring. Okay, gas production. You would see it as fizzing or bubbles being produced as a sign that gas was being made, maybe a bag inflating. And if the gas produces at a very fast rate, that's what an explosion is, right? Is the gas ex happens really fast and pushes against the side of a container and the container breaks, okay, and explodes. Uh, vinegar and baking soda together is an example of gas being produced from a chemical change. A change in temperature that can't be explained in any other way is another example, uh, a sign that a chemical change has occurred. How many of you have ever used those um, hot packs or cold packs that you snap and then there's a temperature change? So what's happening there is inside there is like some little vials that when you snap it you're breaking the plastic and allowing two chemicals to mix and when those chemicals mix it causes the temperature to change and that's how you know the the trainer can keep one of those in his trainer bag and do snap it and then at the soccer game you can put ice on your foot even though you're very far away from a freezer Okay, they're using the chemistry, a chemical change to do that. The last uh, one is one that we don't see very often in our everyday life. It's called the formation of a precipitate. And here you see there's two liquids being mixed. They were both clear to start with. And now we see this yellow solid forming. Uh, that's called formation of a precipitate. And I have a little video clip here to show you that I have a little video clip here to show you that happening. See, the solid is forming. All right, that's the end of the 